Alright, so on the back of the box, the first thing that you will notice is the 2710A model, which means it's the HSPA 850, 1900 and 2100 megahertz network, which means it's perfect for the next G network. Um, this is the one that we've all been waiting for. Alright, we'll just have a really, really quick look at the phone because no one really likes this bit of videos. Uh, this is just generally how it looks and you can see the Telstra branding on the back there. It's not very invasive uh, You do get that really nice HTC glow about it And you've got the obviously the camera there with the two LED flashes. You've got your speak grill uh, When you come around here You've got your screen and I'm not sure we'll try and get it with the light, but you'll be able to see see that that's the Concave screen so if you were to put it down on a flat surface Sorry about that, my fiance was calling. So basically, you can see, if we got the light there, the concave screen, which means you don't actually scratch the screen when you put your phone down um, on a flat surface. And up here, you've got the HTC, the really nice grill there. It's really good to hear. Um, and it's got a noise cancelling headphone. Uh, so it's actually got two microphone receivers, so you can hear really well. And Telstrom actually has a, um, high voice, defini high definition voice. And uh, so making calls on this is just amazing. The clarity is incredible. Uh, you've got the front facing camera there, which is almost hidden. And you've got a light sensor here, which um, detects your automatic brightness to automatically set your brightness levels. We're gonna half show you how to take the back off the phone because it's really kind of hard to do it when I'm filming. But uh, basically you've got this little button here and you just press that. And whilst you press that, you just use your other hand to take the phone up a bit. The phone design is such that you can actually just take that straight off. And you can see the original concern with the Wi-Fi attenuation, which was basically all of these points here. Uh, you've got an internal SD slot, uh, which is nice to see, because with Android, the last thing you want to do is constantly hot swap SD cards, especially because applications install on your SD card and even native applications on your phone save data to the SD card. Uh, you've got your camera there with the dual LED flash, a nice big battery, and uh, you've got the SIM card slot here. Nothing really all that interesting back here. Alright, so let's start the review. Basically, we've got the HTC Mozart and the HTC Sensation. Now, obviously, the Sensation has a bigger screen and is generally a bigger phone. Um, you put one on top of the other, like that, and I mean, the size difference isn't massive, but it's still fairly significant. Uh, when you have a look at the, both the back sides of the phones, I mean, it's generally the design concept is the same, and uh, the build quality, as always with HTC, is absolutely fantastic. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn on the screens and uh, compare the screen. And as you can see, immediately the screen quality is completely different. Uh, it is just so different on so many different levels. This QHD screen that we can see here is a step up in so many ways. Uh, the quality over here is just absolutely impressive. So we'll move the Mozart aside and we're just going to focus on the HTC sensation. All right, so this is pretty much your home screen. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on Sense 3.0 because it's not that much difference to Sense 2.0. Uh, there are subtle differences, but in terms of form and function, uh, there's nothing really that major. Uh, you do have the uh, pinch zoom, which is featured from Sense 2.0. It's very useful to, from getting one screen to another very fast. And uh, one of the major differences here is that you can switch between your panes. Uh, you can actually displace them and move them around as you wish um, based on personal preference. Now one thing you'll notice is this thing over here and you can click that and it'll bring up all your personalization options. You can skin it, um, you can create a scene, uh, but the biggest change here is your lock screen. So we'll go to this and you go to your lock screen and you can change, you can choose wallpaper, photo album, friend stream, friend stream, um, I said that twice, weather, stocks, and your clock. Now we'll apply weather because I think weather's pretty cool. And once we've done that, 
you can either drag this thing out, it gives you a nice animation, you can drag it out just to unlock it straight away, or we can drag, say, Google Maps straight onto there. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, this is actually Brisbane, it's a really nice city if you ever uh, feel like coming down. Uh, it's just a river city and now from the Gold Coast, it's really cruisy, people are pretty laid back here. So, yeah, that's the biggest change. You can actually just drag whatever you want straight into that circle and, you know, access your applications straight away. I find that particularly useful, especially with the uh, camera function. If you want to take instant photos, um, then that's definitely a good option. Uh, they give you this spinny thing which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. You get a sort of flick. Come on. Work. There we go. It took some time, but we finally got there. That doesn't really, like it's a nice touch, but it doesn't really add that much to uh, the user experience. Uh, I see a lot of people do that just for fun, but you know, as you do. Um, one of the biggest things that people ask me about this phone is, uh, does the battery last? And um, I can actually report that it does. In the last, this is actually a 24 hour graph. And you can see I was actually sleeping here. I had it on charge. And I got through a decent day. I, it's now 12, 16 at night. And it came off the charger at about 10 o'clock. So I got a decent 12 hour day out of this and I use it fairly heavily. Uh, which is really interesting and I, I kind of expected not to have a battery that lasted especially on a smartphone this powerful um, so really lucky there the battery is actually fairly decent so you know kudos to HTC for putting a decent battery in this time and um, a lot of people have been asking me as well what kind of bloatware comes on, onto the phone and uh, I'll tell you now I'm actually a technician with Telstra uh, this video is all my opinion, it doesn't represent the opinion of Telstra in any way. Uh, it's just a disclaimer, I have to say that. Uh, but I'll tell you now, there's not really that much bloatware on here. Um, you've pretty much got everything in that Telstra One icon. And that Telstra One icon has pretty much everything. When I say everything, it's got yellow pages, AFL, NRL. You've got white pages, you've got uh, Big Pond News, all of that. All that used to be like a million icons is now into that one icon and you have the default ones that come with the phone anyway, like stocks and news and all that other stuff. But everything else is pretty much yours. Everything else is just everything that you install. And um, a lot of people have also been asking me, oh, the internal memory, are you running out? And I've got over 50 applications on here and I'm not running out because I've saved most of them to my external SD card and a lot of the internal data um, programs use external SD cards to save their data. So buy a good, um, I've got a class 10 which is overkill, but at least buy a class 6 SD card to put into these things so you won't lag your system down. Um, one other thing that we'll have a look at, we're moving on because I don't want to spend too much time on the phone um, operating system because it doesn't really give justice to all the features of the phone which is why you buy it in the first place. Uh, but we'll have a quick squiz at the applications uh, because the applications are fairly important to the user experience. Uh, you've got Google Plus, Huddle. Huddle is really cool. It's like a um, it's like a big MSN convo. Uh, you've got TubeMate which you can download videos, Google Talk, WhatsApp, TweetDeck. TweetDeck is like uh, Facebook and um, Twitter application, um, you've got Skype, which is really handy, they're going to have video chatting on Skype soon. Haytel, I've just started using this one, which is, uh, it's like a walkie-talkie, and you've got Gallery as well, and I'll show you some of the photo quality, because the photos are fairly good. Um, some of the shots I've taken with the camera have been really, really nice. And that's my car, actually, so... If you ever see that in the street, be sure to key it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but the photo quality, as you can see, eight megapixel camera, the sensor is just unreal. And um, it's a really, really good phone camera to use. All right, so you guys can see it's night time and basically all we're gonna be doing is two tests. We're gonna do a speed test inside 
once without touching the phone, second time we won't be, um, we'll be holding it with one hand and the second time we'll be holding it with both hands. And uh, ignore the speed because I've got about three people connected to the internet at the moment on my wireless and um, obviously that's going to slow it down. Today's speed will be in kilobytes per second because I believe it's it's more relevant uh, method of uh, measuring things because you know how many seconds it takes to download an email. Like an, a one megabyte email would only take a few seconds. So all we're going to be doing here is a test. First test. So obviously I'm not touching the phone. Um, just going to see the Wi-Fi performance, which is not bad. Uh, I actually have my internet with TPG and uh, we've got about three to four people. I'm not sure if my fiance is on my laptop at the moment, but I'm probably sure she is. Um, all streaming or doing YouTube or playing games or playing LOL or doing whatever. Um, so, all right, so we've gotten 1,258 kilobytes per second, uh, which is really, 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 really good. Now I'm gonna be holding it, and I, I'm just holding it how a normal person would hold a phone. Um, and seeing if that has any major difference. Um, and immediately you can tell, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Mm. What we're testing for is Wi-Fi attenuation. So whether or not holding the phone interrupts um, your Wi-Fi signal and speed. And in one hand, holding it like a normal person would, no, I don't see any difference. I see 1,123 kilobytes a second. Um, we're about a hundred off, but it's nothing major. It's not, it's not really to be worried about. Now the big worry was if you held it like this, and this is how you hold when you type with your thumbs and do whatever you're doing, or if you're internet browsing, you're doing whatever, uh, this is how you'd hold the phone. So we'll begin the test. And um, let me see. I'm not really seeing any loss of Wi-Fi signal at all. I haven't lost any Wi-Fi bars holding the phone this way. Um, so, I mean, they were talking about, yeah, okay, you can kill the Wi-Fi signal by holding the phone that way, but I haven't really seen any interruption between it. So, that's 1,106. So we're pretty much getting the same. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be holding it like this, pretty much. So I've got all of my hands, all my fingers cupped, and we're gonna be holding it like that. So we'll begin test, and I'm really kind of cupping it. I've got all my fingers on the back, all over the place, um, trying to find this Wi-Fi attenuation. And I'll tell you what, I just can't get it out. I can't get it out at all. So pretty much all of our results were within around 30 kilobytes of each other. Um, no Wi-Fi issues, no matter how we held the phone. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen so many reviews about it and um, I've seen actual people cupping their phone on the YouTube videos and, and they lose Wi-Fi signal, but I just, I can't seem to be able to replicate it. So I don't know what's going on there, but um, if you're worried, it's not an issue for me. So now we're going to go outside and uh, just test the Telstra Next G network. And uh, I'm outside in Brisbane, about one kilometer from the CBD, uh, or about two to three kilometers from the CBD in New Farm. And uh, all we're going to be doing is just testing how fast it is, in case you are wondering um, how fast it is in Brisbane. So let's go outside. All right, so we are currently outside and we're just testing the next few speeds that we can get. And um, actually right next to a road. <laughs> and uh, wow, we're seeing some crazy, crazy speed right here. This is on the Telstra Next G network. We're in Brisbane. We are probably about three or four kilometers out from the CBD. And uh, that is fairly impressive, 628 kilobytes a second which is, um, that is incredible, just ridiculous, so. 
And thus comes an end to our HTC Sensation review. Uh, we do have a review on the HTC Mozart, which uh, a lot of people liked, so that's one of the reasons why we came back and did the HTC Sensation review. Uh, and if you'd like to see more reviews, let us know. I'd also make mention to PSX2P and James F for being YouTube winners. Uh, these keyrings are on their way to your doorsteps, wherever you guys may be. So, congratulations. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe and like this video. And uh, if you want to win uh, a business card holder from epicstore.com.au, we are giving away that next week. All you have to do is hop on to epicstore.com.au slash blog, which is in the links below, and uh, just make a comment and subscribe to my Twitter. Those are the only two things you have to do. Uh, liking this video is optional, but I would like it if you liked this video. And uh, this is the business card holder here. So we are giving that away to a winner. We use random.org and this could be yours. We ship worldwide. So definitely hang around on our channel and uh, there are rewards.